Welcome back to Smith & Jones' festive tour of the beautiful blue pennant quarries of the Forest of Dean. Beautiful they might be, Steve, but this one is so cold. There's an icy wind blowing through. <laughs> so it's about time we warmed up our souls and take a look back at the highlights from 2020. So to begin at the beginning, and who can forget? Well, certainly Brandon behind the camera can forget. Our time in South Africa back in January, when we were at the specialized Levo SL launch at the vineyard. And unfortunately, I was out of action for five days sweating. But it's nevertheless, nice wine, it was nice wine. It was nice wine, was it? I didn't get to taste any. However, I did get to taste the all new Levo SL. And it has actually been a year mm -hmm. of lightweight e-mountain bikes. But the Levo SL, um, 17 kilos, 35 newton meter motor, uh, full carbon uh, frame on this one. And I think it introduced a new philosophy of e-mountain bikes. Now, it's an interesting story, actually, Chris, an interesting story, should I say, um, that the guys that specialized, when they started off making e-bikes, this was the kind of bike that they were thinking of making. Really, yeah. And it is a, it's, it's a cool bike. It's a very mm. different mindset though, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's that bike that kind of fills the gap between e-bike and mountain bike. And we've seen a lot of riders coming into the sport that don't want that full powered, heavyweight e-bike. They want that little bit of assistance, not that full blown powered. Yeah. And then of course, we moved into the month of February and we had the bike uh, from Andorra, Icy Andorra, mm -hmm. the Forest Owl bike. Yeah, uh, super Again, exciting. super minimalist, mm -hmm. uh, using the Bafang motor, the, uh, I can't remember the, the model of the Bafang, but, Fantastic display on there, beautifully streamlined uh, uh, chassis on there. And you know, it, it was great to see it actually in life because we'd seen the bike the previous year out in Sea Otter Festival. And um, yeah, I think interesting times there. Yeah, definitely. Those guys. And I think you've got guys like obviously Cedric Grassier, who's the man behind Forest Style Bikes, really knows, you know, he's been riding for what, how many years now, Steve? Probably 20 or 30, maybe more years. 58 years. <laughs> <laughs> so he really knows his stuff when it comes to riding. And I think yeah. that is really important, you know, to have a, a man like that behind the scenes yeah. when it comes to designing those bikes. Yeah, and of course, then we went into the spring and uh, the new Canyon Spectron, mm -hmm. Chris. Yes, um, again. Uh, with the new uh, internal battery. Yeah. Um, and a, a, sleek, a sleeker bike than the previous one. I know the guys at Canyon did yeah. agonize over whether they should go with an internal battery yeah. or an external. I mean, I always liked the external battery myself. Super easy to use, isn't it? And the thing I liked about them was if you're going out on those big rides, stick that little battery in a backpack, super easy to change on the fly. Yeah. Chris, you know, Canyon specialized. I mean, there's loads of other brands. What do you reckon? Maybe in the new year, some different product from those guys? Possibly, yeah. I don't know how we're going to change things up. We've seen lightweight e-bikes. We've seen, you know, uh, not so powerful motors. I wonder what they've got, you know, what they're working on behind the scenes. That's what I'd really like I to I certainly find out. think that there will be a, a split uh, in, the, in the market between lightweight powered e-bikes and uh, heavier powered e-bikes. Now, if, uh, if you want to see more on that subject, we've done two videos on Future Tech. Uh, we'll leave the link down below. Uh, but Chris, going back into 2020, mm -hmm. Let's move into some maybe people, the people side people. of things other than product. Well, I can't think of a top name pro that doesn't actually ride an e-bike now. I think some interesting movements that we've really seen is people like, I think Reese Wilson, our World Cup downhill champion now, absolutely every single clip I think I see of him on his social media is riding an e-bike and apparently he did so well because of the amount of practice that he's got in going up and down his local trails so much more than he would do on his regular mountain bike. Yeah, but if we were to choose one edit from 2020 that really did do it for e-mountain bikes, mm -hmm. you know where I'm going, didn't you? I know where you're going to go. You know go. where I'm going, didn't you? <laughs> I think we're heading to Yorkshire, maybe? We're heading to Yorkshire and some rocks mm -hmm. and Chris Aikrig. Yeah. What an amazing edit. Yeah. What a physical edit. Yeah, it's crazy. What a technical edit. Yeah. What a just a ridiculous bit of mountain biking. Anything that guy does on two wheels is amazing. I think we've seen him do it on standard mountain bikes. It's mind-blowing stuff. But adding that electric power to the mix, yeah, as you say, it was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, talking of pros, actually, uh, EWSE uh, started this year. Um, we went out to Italy for the final round, but it start, all started off uh, in Zermatt, and um, Nico Vulios, who was the favorite, uh, didn't take the win. It was Yannick Pontal, uh, both on uh, Lapierre bikes. Tracy Mosley yeah. uh, in the women's came back super strong mm. uh, in the latter round, but it was a series, an exciting series, which is actually dominated by Bosch Motors. Definitely, yeah. It's been, it's been crazy, hasn't it? It was a year for motors, for mm. sure. 
The yeah. new Shimano EP8 motor. Yeah, that was uh, talked about, hyped about for quite a few years. Great to see that coming from the market. And of course, Bosch did that update on their motors as well, pumping it up to 85 Newton meters yeah. torque and adding a few modes to it as well. So of course, yes, and now both the uh, Shimano motors got 85 Newton meters, plus the Bosch got 85 Newton meters. Uh, and also you saw that increased adjustability on the EP8 motor. Uh, but then of course we had the EP8 RS into e the in the Obe mm -hmm. rise yeah. from uh, from Basque country, mm -hmm. 17 kilos, uh, quite quite a machine that mm, does quite look a good. machine, super lightweight, and it's you know it is different to ride lighter weight e mountain bikes. Um, some people say they're quicker downhill. Um, it depends. It depends on the track. Yeah, I think really? slower speeds are definitely a lot more nimble and maybe a little bit more. I don't know. I think if you're coming from a mountain bike world, uh, maybe a little bit more manageable rather than that full blown e bike skills wise. If you're not as strong or as big, I like the big, powerful bikes. And then, of course, we had that super cool looking bike, Kelly's from mm. Eastern Europe, with a different kind of carbon manufacture, which was steel impregnated. So uh, that's it. That's, our, that's some of our highlights here. There were loads more um, in our year at home. But uh, guys, let us know what your highlights for 2020 are, right, Chris? Yeah, let us know what you think will be coming in 2021. Love to hear that. Or maybe that's a topic for another show, Steve. What do you think? Why not? Coming up this week on EMBM, we've got a great week of content as always. And kicking things off on Friday, we've got all the weird things that e-bikers get up to out in the woods. Tell us about that, Steve. You're a bit well, of a we're weird doing, guy. Aren't we? we love, I mean, we love it. We love perching bikes up against rocks. And don't talk to me about quarries. You spend all your time hanging out in quarries. <laughs> what else we got? On Sunday, we've got why 2021 is gonna be the year of the e-mountain bike. But is it? You guys let us know your thoughts on what's gonna happen in 2021. Wow, this looks good. Uh, off the coast of Africa, on the island of Tenerife. Uh, pretty hot place. Uh, Fritten is giant. I mean, Tenerife there, uh, you know, um, on a rental bike from El Crida in Puerto de la Cruz. I wouldn't mind being on a beach in Tenerife, wouldn't you? It'd be amazing, wouldn't it, in that sun, rather than a freezing cold quarry in the middle of Wales. But it's a beautiful bit of rock, Chris. <laughs> Next up, we've got Mark here on his 2020 high bike all mountain 6.0 out in Danville in California. It says this is a monster, four hills tied together by a big dirt trail. And the pictures definitely don't do that. Monster. Right. They do that. It looks absolutely epic. I'm uh, sure that's definitely gonna get the heart rate pounding out your, chair, uh, out of your chest. Your heart rate pounding out of your chin? Chart. Out your chart. <laughs> out your chart. <laughs> your heart rate pounding out your chart. That one. <laughs> Folks, hope you like our new gallery on Air and a Bad or where you've been or uh, what is it? Where in the world? Where in the world? Call it what you will. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love these places. Inspirational geology. Definitely. And sea and sand and sun. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's and good, quarries. <laughs> what about Mick though? What about Mick though? Mick, well, we had the um, Hunter Chargers. Mm -hmm. We've seen the Hunter Chargers before. We have. They're a big e bike group based out in Newcastle, New South Wales, out in Australia. Mm. He says, another group ride for the Hunter Chargers. Try to do one uh, at least every fortnight in the summer, this time along the coast in Rugged National Park. Photo show a sea, sea cave, which is a monument to all the fishermen lost out at sea. Looks like an amazing and ride. And World there. War II bunkers yeah, looks from like a radar ride. station. Looks like an amazing ride there, doesn't it? Mm. And what about Keegan? Mm -hmm. Kevin, is this a relation to yours? <laughs> Did you know Kevin, dear? Do you Kevin know Kevin? Keegan. Kevin Keegan, famous footballer. Not much of a 1970s, cricket. lovely hairstyle. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is a 2020 Marie, 500 SE E7000 tuning, 48 tooth chain ring, Whoa. Maxus refuse tires. Or is that refuse? Refuse, I think that's some slick tires, <laughs> aren't they? He's out in sunny Queensland. 
Uh, he said, never really rated e-mountain bikes before until his friend lent, uh, lent him his Merida. He's Isn't hooked. He hooked he's and hooked. he's out there. Just out, he's gone out to tune this bike because he's got slicks on it and a big chain ring. So he's already burnt through a chain and cassette in just over a thousand K. And that's the problem with de-restricting and running a big chain ring like that, Steve, and riding it 30 miles an hour everywhere, isn't it? Be very, very careful with de-restricting your e-bike. So he's have mass massive fun wheeling around the boardwalks and have dream speed runs. So he's getting some big wheelies in there. Do you know one well. thing nice. I'd like to see less of in 2021? What's that? De-restriction. Really? Mm. Let us know your thoughts on de-restriction, guys. I'm sure there's some of you that ride your e-bikes on private lands. But, but um, love seeing all those videos and pictures here on EMBN, so make sure you use that upload service to get them featured on the show. Don't be a vandal. Right, Christmas, have you got the bike vault loaded up for I have our New Year's special? Locked and loaded. We've got loads of cool entries in this week, Steve. So, should we dive straight in? Let's dive in good to Westport. There's Wi Fi out here, then, is there? Huh? Yeah. Wi Fi out here. There's amazing Wi Fi out here. We've not had any problems this time. <laughs> and we're starting off this week's bike vault, this mm. special New Year's bike vault uh, with uh, Westport, New Zealand on the radar mm -hmm. and Mike and his giant stance. Yeah, he says out for a nice summer ride on some fantastic trails while some trees fall down in the background. Steve, do you hear that? Holy crap. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, that's nice. It's nice, isn't it? Then we've got Matthew here on his 20 2021 commence on MetaPower 29. He's out in Vermont, uh, out on a nice ride on an old carriage it's trail. Signature commence on MetaPower 29, Chris. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Not any old MetaPower 29. It's a signature model. Yeah, yeah. What are we thinking on that shot? Uh, out in the old carriage trail, 11 e man bag of sprints. Ah, it's nice, isn't nice, it? Nice, yeah. Mm. Oh, moving out to Apostica in Portugal. Do you think that'd be a bit warmer than here today? I hope so. <laughs> this is uh, Manuel on his high bike all mountain 7.0, exploring new trails. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what are you thinking? I'm thinking it's super nice. Super nice. Mm -hmm. Then we have Jonathan out in Milan in Italy on his Milan Cannondale. Goal. Yeah. Cannondale Matera 20, uh, 2020 model. Changing the brakes and putting a uh, change from a boxer to a Zeb fork on there. You used to be a Cannondale pro rider, didn't you? I did. Mm -hmm. I jacked it in and come and joined you on there, didn't you I? You jacked, didn't you? Anyway, talk us about through Milan. Um, super nice. Super nice. You wouldn't say anything else, would you? <laughs> Being an ex Cannondale racer. And what about James and his high bike all nine and six on Snaffel Summit in the Isle of Man? We don't get many Isle of Man shots. We don't, do we? Every time I'm fortunate, upgrade my e bike. And rich, a ritual of mine is to try and climb the highest peak on our island. There's a, there's a thing to do. What, the Isle of Man? Yeah. Isle of Man TT. We could do a loop, lap. couldn't we, as well? Could do a lap. De restricted. That's nice. Like and, a style. and Jane. <laughs> sorry, Jay. Jay. Um, Table Evo. Tivlivu, Tivlivu, Tivlivu in uh, Eagle, Idaho. <laughs> Love the evening rides, looking for that bike of the week shot. He's, I reckon he's close to this yeah, one. Yes, isn't it? It's a very nice shot, that. I'm thinking that's definitely got to be super nice. Yeah, absolutely. And then we've got Tomislav. He's on an Olympia X900 Sport. Did you see an Olympia? An Olympia. <laughs> a bit cold here, but I've got the shiver going on. An Olympia. He's in Croatia, in Zagreb, <laughs> Nick Natural Park in Medev. Medvidnica. We had a great time in Croatia last year. Do you remember on the we old did. great bikes? Did, it was anyway, a good trip. Um, beautiful autumn ride, one of the many trails that can't be climbed out. It's nice, it's nice. nice. Show, isn't it? And finally, we have got Mark's Orbea Wild FS uh, on the Ridgeway near Ardington. Our yes. first pre-work mm -hmm. ride of the year. Just before the ground defrosted. First pre-work ride of the year. Yes, he's been out. She's been out before she starts work. Okay, right. What a time of the year to do a pre-ride well, It's work. a cold one. What do you think of hey, that yeah. shot there? It's nice, but what is the bike of the week this week? Well, from the cold mm, blue I pen back quarry quarry in the forest of Dean. I think a J might take it. Uh, might, from, definite. Definitely. Definite. Uh, he's at Idaho. Definite. Shot is amazing, isn't it? Bike looks good. Backdrop looks amazing. I think that just inspires everyone to get out there, whatever the weather. Top darts, Jay, top darts. <laughs> and that is it from the bike vault from our super cold blue pen and quarry in the Forest of Dean. Let us yeah. know your thoughts of the bike vault, plus all the best bits. The best bits from 2020. All the bikes, the tech, the people that have got involved this year and what you think they're going to be up to next year and all the exciting kit that's going to be on the market. Really looking forward to it. 
Hope you enjoyed today's show. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN and give us a find and follow on social media and we shall see you. But don't go trying to find us because we'll be in some quarry somewhere. <laughs> and see you next week. Cheers.